Hello, temp number two at a blog. Again, I'm wearing a hat indoors. Fuck y'all, I hate manners. I don't care. I'm going to start with my own impression of Daily Boy's Width of a Circle. And why Width of a Circle? Because it relates to diameter and radius of circumference and pi, which is my favorite transcendental number. Who doesn't like a number that can be bracketed between 3.14 and 3.15? It can never be defined exactly. So we go... Yeah, say, can you read this? You know what this says? It says, Stephen Beer, Marilyn Manson, Inc. Really? I was never a partner in the band? No fucking way. I have this platinum card right here that has my name right on it. Oh, that's right. Marilyn Manson, Inc. doesn't exist. It went bankrupt when it got sold out by the record label. That's what happens, man. So let me get my guitar over here, this little... Four string motherfucker half scale bitch. And he'll play it with a shotgun. Better than I can play it with my two hands and a bunch of fairies helping. I want to talk about a few things. There's. Oh, come on, take the goddamn pick already. Right. Okay. There's a few things. Like, I really wanted to do more detailed analysis on what um, questions were asked. I had some problems though, like when I was talking about symmetry and supersymmetry that took a while for people to get back to me on my questions with their answers. Some very good answers, I must admit, uh, but they often had to deal with like absolute zero and the freezing of molecular structures or entropy and the heading toward disorder or order depends on how you think about it, but the increasing structure of the universe leads to... Um, less chaos and then from more order but kind of that's the opposite of what I understood of entropy myself I thought entropy was always about going to disorder and the formulas that were put up though amazingly well done really stellar work still didn't really explain it because all I do is relate the increase in entropy to the natural log of the orientation of the variables that you're looking at now the orientation of the variables you're looking at might not all be symmetrical. So that equation really doesn't relate entropy to symmetry, let alone supersymmetry. We're not even going to go to that place. I'm just trying to figure out like why symmetry is like the way it is. I mean, we're bilaterally symmetry. You cut you in half, you're the same, right? Left side, two eyes, two nostrils, split teeth, two arms, two legs. You're symmetrically symmetrical, 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 symmetrical between male and female. Why does nature prefer this? Uh, is it genetic diversity? Um, apparently at some point it is, but not always, because there's certain snails that are only develop into both male and female when it's the proper point in time. If there are no proper males around, they just all turn into females who can reproduce. So it was a big problem for me. And my other thing too is that this idea that the universe is going to try to occupy the least most space which leads to spherical sort of ideas of the universe. Now, I like that idea. It makes sense, like a bubble makes sense. But then again, the closest way to pack things is like a beehive, hexagonal close pack crystalline structure. So if you want to have the strongest structure and you want to use the least amount of space for that strength, I still say interlocking hexagons are better than spheres because you have that dead empty air in there. That's why the Japanese invented those crazy ass watermelons that are square and shit. I don't know what this has to do with anything, but I'm just really glad at the questions you posted and certain other things. We we sit here and we go, um, I, I'm I'm really kind of pissed off at this idea that people are talking about A440 has something to do with like Goebbels and 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 his attempt to like conform the world to some sort of A standard. It was only done so that way sheet music could be conscribed, conscribed, not transcribed whatever the big problem I find here is that and you know I'm talking all fucked up and shit so please forgive all the bullshit commentary the big problem I find is this we have published music nowadays it has a bass tref tref cleft excuse me a bass cleft 
and a treble cleft. Okay? And besides that, we're not talking about sheet lead, lead sheets or anything like that. We're talking about classic bass and treble cleft type shit, you know, F and G cleft stuff. That what you have is the things that two hands on a piano play, and then you have the lyrics on top. Because this was designed at the time that sheet music was designed, and that's how you made your money. You sold your money for like penny a sheet. You know what I mean? And so that's how they defined it. Some guy sat down at the piano like Scott Joplin and boom, 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 boom. One hand's playing the fucking treble, one hand's playing the bass, and there's a singing melody. And that gives no credit to drumming, which is the basis of all modern music. I mean, you can copy any drum beat you want as long as you don't outright mechanically sample it. And no one gives a shit. It's not copyright protected. But man, God bless you if you play more than five chords in a row in the fucking, you know, treble line, you know? And in the bass line, you can probably play about like eight, maybe ten before you get like sued for some shit or something. I mean, Jesus Christ, there's only twelve colors in our present uh, chromatic system. I think that's kind of fucked up. I mean, like, I, I do agree the chromatic system is better. Like the Werkmeister that it descended from, that Bach proved was better for playing the most music and the most tunings. But it, to, to try to own it is bullshit. It's like trying to own the color purple or the color blue or the color red or something. It's like you can't own a drum beat, yet a drum beat and a man talking over it, that's what makes hip hop great. What the fuck is that about? You know what I mean? Like, I didn't think music could get any simpler than punk rock until I saw fucking hip hop. And I mean that in a good way. It's like bringing minimalism in, straight into the fucking focus. Because they're trying to find a way to make music fucking publishable. Money making. And the way to make money is to have that F fucking bar treble clef, and to have that G bar bass clef, and to have some words written above it. Or have a lead sheet with the shit written above it. Oh, E major, D minor, H7, blah, blah, blah. Whatever. It's bullshit. It gives no credit to drummers. It gives no fucking credit to what modern music has become. How do I describe shit that's microtonal? It's in between the tones. It doesn't fit on the goddamn chart. I can put a half step, quarter step notation in between my fucking uh, shit at the beginning of the fucking cleft. But that still doesn't describe it. I can go to all kinds of fucking microtunings. You know what I mean? From shit from Wendy Carlos to pure Justinian. It's bullshit, and I'm kind of pissed about that. I just want to let y'all know that, like, I really appreciate your questions. You're doing some fucking fine ass jobs of fucking fighting me. I love a good fight. Please, bring the noise. Tell me what you think. Tell me why you think what you think is real. And not based on some stupid music theory idea. Because according to music theory, all the blues are bullshit. They don't fit in modern fucking classical music theory shit. So modern classical music has adopted to jazz and blues, not vice versa. Blues and jazz didn't adopt to classical. So anyways, that's my diatribe for these few minutes. But remember, please, man, listen to your ears. You don't read music. If you read music, that's like feeling the flavor of a steak. Do your fingers feel flavor? Do your eyes hear music? They don't. Your ears hear music. Your tongue tastes music. Your nose adds to that taste. Well, not just, well, my, my mouth tastes music. I mean, taste steak. But your nose and your mouth, they add to the taste of steak. It's not the texture of the steak that's so important, unless you're eating filet mignon, which tastes like shit. It tastes so fucking bland, you have to wrap it in bacon to make it worth a crap. You know what I mean? Give me a real steak. Porterhouse. You know, sirloin. Something with some goddamn flavor. Anyways, I'm just glad that modern music's been turned on its ear. The people making the most money aren't jazz, aren't classical guys, even though I love what they do. I think they do fantastic, marvelous work. I mean, really great shit. But they're not accounting for beat. They're not accounting all the time for tone and timbre, unless you're like Philip Glass or some avant-garde guy who decides that, like, hey, I can make noise and call it music. And yeah, punk rock did that, and so did hip-hop. Whoopee fucking do da day I'm not trying to disrespect any of the three. I'm just saying I can do that. I appreciate the fact, though, that they've come to destroy what we all thought was this 12-tone system. You know, the combination of the diatonic and the pentatonic to this monochromatic system. And this system is just bullshit for what little credit it gives to the rest of a band. Go look at musical scales when you get paid if you play, if you play, uh, 
Tonight Show, Jay Leno, whatever, uh, Matt TV, fucking SNL, whatever. You gotta join a union just to get paid. Whether it's the American Federation of Musicians, whether it's the American Federation of Television and Radio Artists. Yeah, but even though American Federation of Television and Radio Artists supposedly merged with fucking uh, SAG, you can't get in. Because you ain't got no speaking parts. Even though you can sit there in a silent movie and not speak a goddamn word and still be a member of SAG. Tell me what that fucking shit's about. Thank you. And have a pleasant evening. Billy, take me away on some fucking slide guitar. That's all it takes, brother. Four strings. Four strings. <laughs>